That's when my trip in Texas is going to end tomorrow. Well, not, it's not going to end tomorrow, but I'm leaving Texas tomorrow back home. I've been here for about 50 something days and I have a couple theories um, why I was finding what I was finding here. And um, the ground here is really mild. It's sand. I'll show you here. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the, some of the finds that I was finding here. See, see the sand here? It's just sand, sandy soil. And some, some spots, many spots, there are spots of clay and it's really dense black land prairie clay, really sticky and gummy. And some spots are red clay, um, kind of moderate, moderate, not mild, but moderate um, mineralization in the clay. Some spots are hot. And sometimes I can dig a hole right here. I can dig a hole right here and it's mild soil. And I can dig a hole right here and it's really hot. And then I dig a, a spot right here and it's just sand. Then I dig a spot right there it's all the time. It's just all the time. Or some spots are really hard. Um, and I go three feet away and it's just sand, really loose sand. And um, I didn't really hit a lot of roots here when I was in Texas. So that's a good, that's might be a good thing. But um, the ground was moderate mild to moderate so there's it's not really highly mineralized I'm, I'm used to digging in mineralized ground and but i was finding a lot of ring poles right near the surface so sometimes i would just be be hunting an inch deep you know going just going for an inch deep and there's just ring poles you know 40 year old pole tat ring poles right on the surface you know, some of them baking right in the sun and there's just so many of them sometimes i would pop a plug and there'd be five, six, seven, I don't know how many ring poles just in one hole, just uh, within the field of the coil. You know, I'd dig a nine inch round plug and there'd be four or five ring poles in the same hole. Um, a lot, you know, I, I did that a lot. And I just started really getting in tune with the soil here just um, the last couple, few days. Um, I started learning a site that I was digging on for two days. I dug on the site for two days just so many ring poles here and I have a theory about that there's the reason why there's so many ring poles here and the ring poles are 40 years old and they're right near the surface the this there's a layer of clay underneath the sand a lot here and it rains a lot here so the sand um gets compacted and not a lot can really penetrate the coins can but the ring poles can't you know it gets the ring poles get trapped in the, the grass roots the grass roots roots suspend those ring poles because they have a lot to grab onto it's a ring sized uh, shape to it so it has uh, the roots can hold on to that and not let it drop down into the sand and the coins are going to sink deeper but they don't they, the coins really don't go super deep um in most of the spots i was hunting and i was hunting in spots that were so trashy i was not able to really do much um with with depth because it was just so trashy i'm like i said i was digging out ring pull after ring pull in the same hole um so and there's a lot of just a lot of ring poles twist tops aluminum twist tops and bottle caps you know i was um i wasn't really digging up a lot of bottle caps um because i was i just know what they sound like but the reason why there's so many of them compared to where i live at where i live at it's not really it's not really great weather um throughout the year so people aren't drinking a lot of water they're not drinking a lot of soda and whatnot here in T east texas it's so humid and hot pretty much most of the year um people are really drinking a lot of fluids so um even back in the 70s and 80s you know when the ring poles were they were um had ring poles on cans they were um drinking a lot there you know um even in february i was here in february february and march i was here in february and it was 86 87 degrees um 80s I think 88 degrees was the warmest day in February. And um, it was very humid at times too. It can be 70 in the 70s and it can be high humidity, but it can feel really warm. So I'm sweating, you know, I'm sweating a lot. And that's the reason why there's so many more ring poles um, for pop cans here in East Texas compared to where I live at. You know, where I live at, um, it's overcast and kind of drizzly, you know, really misty um for most of the winter here it's not like that you know and it what's funny is it's it's about the same amount of precipitation in my area 
um, in Oregon, as right here in East Texas, but they just get a lot of rain. You know, we had a couple, a couple um, severe um, days of weather here, two tornado warnings for my area on two different occasions, but a lot of thunderstorms, you know, March is a kind of a wet, wet month here. Um, one day it rained, I think four inches here, four inches. You know, that's about as much as Oregon gets in one, one month, right? Um, we got that in just a few hours here. But I'm going to go inside the garage here and I'm going to show you some of the finds that I found. Um, I found several rings, lots of jewelry, lots of coins, and of course, just bags and bags and bags and bags of ring pulls and twist tops. It's just crazy how much trash is here. Um, um, I, I wasn't able to hunt really a lot of top lots because the towns, the, the, the thing with Texas is here, East Texas, is there are a lot of small towns about 10 miles away from each other, small towns. Um, I, the nearest big city is Dallas and that's about 90 miles, 80 miles away. So, and the small towns, um, the playgrounds are all pretty much rock and some of them some of them are rubber, so the rubber's really hard to hunt in. The rocks are really hard to hunt in. I only found one playground around this whole area, and I went to a lot of different cities, a lot of different small cities around here. Um, I'm talking like 10,000 or two or three or 4,000 people um, in each city, but they're far away, you know, so I have to drive a long ways to, to go metal detecting. And um, I found a couple top lots that had um, one around here that had wood chips in it, but it was, the roots were so freaking bad in it. I did hunt it, hunted it for a, quite a while, but I'm going to go inside here and I'm going to show you some of the coins, some of the coins that I found, right? So this is some of the trash, you know. This is some of the trash I throw. I try to throw most of the trash away at the at the park, but this is this is the coins that I got in um, around here, and then I hunted in a park for two days, about about twelve hours altogether. Two days. This is how many coins I got, and I got a silver quarter yesterday um, in this park right here. Some jewelry. I found lots of jewelry. Several rings. Here's some of the jewelry I found some of the jewelry that I found. I have the rest of the other jewelry and the silver. The silver coin I found. I found um, a, one silver ring and a bunch of junker rings and all those coins. And But I'm going to be heading back tomorrow, so I just want to do a wrap-up of my trip here in Texas. I'm going to be on the train again. I'm going to be on the train again for three days, 70-something hours. So I'm going to be posting some videos to um i'm going to be um scheduling some videos to post when i'm on the train um but when i get back home i'm gonna have a lot of videos to go through and to actually upload to youtube um i have a lot uploaded already i've been just uploading just lots and lots of videos from this this um these hunts in texas here it'll take me um about a month to get through all the, the my video cards um, that are full of videos. I have lots and lots of videos of my trip to Texas here, so I'll probably be posting them in the next month or so. Um, but um, I've, I really had a lot of fun, and I wanna say thank you, um, Jason Gwynn. Um, he let me borrow his shovel. When I first got here, um, he was watching my videos, and he lives about 80 miles away. He was watching my videos and I was saying, man, it sucks not having a shovel, man. Because I was trying to hit, I wanted to hit on deeper targets, but I just didn't have a shovel. And he said, hey, he, he, um, <clears throat> he messaged me, gave me an email. He said, hey, man, I live not too far away. I have a Predator shovel that you can borrow. I said, thank you so much. And he let me borrow a bag too, but I never used it. Um, but I, um, I hunted with Vance also too. Vance lives about 80 miles away in the other direction. Ants down the pants, Vance. Um, fire ants down pants vance he lives down that way um about 80 miles and i hunted with him several times too and we just went to different places different cities and whatnot and you know i'm 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 starting to learn this soil here and the the areas that i was hunting at um the the learning the layers of the park and 
you can't just go out there and metal detect and, and decide, oh, I'm gonna hit on deeper coins through trash. Just not gonna happen. You have to dig those layers out. It's layer by layer by layer. And it doesn't matter what kind of detector you have, what kind of coil or how many years experience you have, you have to dig the layers out. Metal detectors will not um, unmask coins through wrinkles, right? It's, it's, you can't do that. You can do it through foil a little bit, maybe choose a, a frequency, a lower frequency. And this soil likes the lower frequencies. That's one good thing. My soil where I'm at um, in the Willamette Valley just doesn't like those lower frequencies. Um, I have to swing slow too when I'm in the lower frequencies. Um, I was really getting in tune and I was becoming one with the Deus II on the last few hunts. Um, that's why I was choosing to, to hunt with the Deus II. Um, because I could swing it faster, I could go deeper because I only have this five by a six by 10 coil for the, the Legend and I have a nine inch coil for the Deus II. So I was just choosing the Deus II um, because it's just lighter, I can swing it faster, I can get a lot more targets out because it's a lighter machine. Um, when I get home, I'm going to be using the um, the LG30 coil. Um, so I'm going to see see what I can get out of the ground with that larger coil there. Um, I, I really like a smaller coil. You know, I really like a lighter machine because I'm getting a lot of targets out. But when I do get back home, I'm going to be getting a MindLab X Terra Pro straight up. That is a machine that I've been really been looking at close. Um, I, I really want one really, really, really bad. Um, that's that's what's going to happen this year. I'm going to be testing the Simplex Ultra to the MindLab Xterra Pro. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be um, really putting those machines through their paces, really beating them up. You know, I'm going to do some durability tests on this at MindLab Xterra Pro. I, I want to know how if it's going to last, if it's going to um, be a durable machine. It's, it's it's pretty much got everything I want in a detector on paper in black and white um it's got everything i want in a detect everything i i would need in a detector me hunting in the parks and stuff i'm not really doing any beach stuff um you know i'll find a few spots of iron you know to test the machines in but well i'm gonna be heading back home tomorrow so i'm gonna be on a train for a few days thank you for watching